Uh, for the final presentation, I'm going to switch topics just a little bit and talk about zinc accumulation in soils. Um, and I've been participating in this group for a few years now and have asked periodically, are you seeing issues with zinc? Um, and a lot of people say they're not really seeing it in their states. And I, I think a reason for that is one that uh, North Carolina is very intensive in animal ag production. So we're number three for pork production, we're number four, I think, for broiler production, and we're number one for turkey production. So we have a lot of manure being generated in North Carolina. Um, and also, most of our nutrient management plans are based off of a nitrogen-based rate still. Um, and so I think the reason why we're seeing uh, soil zinc accumulation is because of the lack of phosphorus-based manure management planning. And so we're seeing an accumulation beyond what we might expect uh, due to that continuous over-application of zinc. And so I wanna talk a little bit about what we're seeing um, and, and why we're seeing it and uh, maybe give you some insights to think about uh, if you're working with a farmer who is not uh, thinking about phosphorus, then we might want to start thinking about zinc as well and make sure we at least look at our soil test reports to identify whether we have zinc accumulation. So in North Carolina, I think we're number four to six in peanut production in the U.S., um, and so we have a crop that is especially sensitive to zinc, which is what first raised an alarm uh, regarding zinc accumulation. Peanuts are, are very sensitive. And so even at very low levels of zinc, we can see um, toxicity symptoms. So this is in a greenhouse. So we induced some toxicity symptoms and this is stem splitting in peanuts. But something that has popped up recently is we're seeing some issues in fields that we haven't traditionally seen zinc toxicity issues in. This one is soybeans. Um, and you can see that we're uh, really seeing some just obliteration of these soybeans. We see this rust color. Um, and what it turned out to be is there was a sludge application um, and the zinc index was, was sky high and the pH was also low. And so that resulted in um, some really poor stands and actually they lost portions of this field because of that. Um, and so this is why it's a, a topic of particular interest for me in North Carolina is because we're starting to see these issues more often. And the reason why it happens is either from repeated manure application. So we see zinc toxicity on fields that have received 30 to 50 years worth of poultry litter application, or they might receive a one-time application of swine sludge. Um, now, our swine systems in North Carolina, our waste management systems on swine farms is very different than other parts of the country. Um, and so you might not see as great of an impact as we see with a sludge uh, application, but um, it, over time, you still might see a significant accumulation of zinc in your soils. And so over time, through either repeated or a one-time application, we can see this accumulation, which results in a de decrease in yield, uh, decrease then in nutrient uptake of the crops that we are planting, and then that further exacerbates the problem of accumulation in our soils as we continue to over-apply zinc to these fields. Very similar to the phosphorus conversation. If you over apply it, it's going to accumulate in our soils. The problem with zinc though, is we're getting to points where we're actually uh, almost sterilizing our soils in some instances where they get so high. And so we wanna make sure that we keep an eye on this because it can be an issue. Now, like I said, we're a big swine, broiler and turkey producing state. Um, so I wanted to show some information for all three types of materials. Um, as you can see, zinc concentration varies with all of them, but it really, really varies with swine lagoon sludge. A lot of that has to do with the dry matter content of the different uh, sludges themselves. Uh, you can have a lot of water, less than 10%, or you can have some that are 20% and able to be um, spread by a truck. Um, and so we see a real big difference in the amount of zinc per thousand gallons for swine lagoon sludge 
Um, another big driver and probably the biggest driver is we have multiple production systems uh, that are represented here as well. So nursery pigs tend to be fed more zinc and therefore we see a lot of zinc in nursery uh, lagoon sludge. And so that's an area of particular concern for us is when a nursery um, hog lagoon needs to be cleaned out, we need to be very, very um, careful with the application rates. As far as turkey litter and broiler litter, we do some, see some variability. A lot of that has to do with um, the feed that's coming onto the facility, the amount of feed wastage, uh, the number of flocks that are within uh, or that uh, occur before cleanouts. So there's all sorts of things that can play into this. Um, but the main thing is it's important to look at the waste analysis, as we all know. Um, and so we can see some variability there. When it comes to uh, actually seeing toxicity symptoms in peanuts, we're talking pretty high rates of um, zinc over time, but it is a cumulative effect. So uh, I think we're starting to see zinc toxicity in soybeans around 140 pounds per acre of zinc. Um, and so you can get that really quick with a swine sludge or you can build it over time with poultry litter. And again, we have this very sensitive crop that we raise uh, it, or grow in North Carolina and it's grown mostly in our sandy coastal plain soils. Uh, and so because of this, we have to be especially careful when it comes to zinc in these areas. Uh, we're talking 25 pounds of zinc versus the 140, or it's probably less than 25 pounds of zinc in our soil to need to uh, before you start seeing toxicity symptoms in peanuts. Now, when we look at the soil test reports coming in, we see that our main peanut producing area is doing a really good job of keeping our zinc down in uh, that region. And so uh, this figure is showing the percentage of soil samples where you might see a zinc toxicity uh, if you were to grow peanuts. And so you can see that our main production area is doing really good. We've got less than five or less than 10% in most of those uh, main production counties, but we do have regions where we're seeing over 20 and sometimes up to 40% of soil samples coming back above that threshold. And if any of you know the demographics of North Carolina, that star is where we have a lot of turkey production and we have a lot of swine production. And so within this area, uh, we've made a concerted effort to let growers know that they really need to be uh, considering the amount of zinc that's already in their soil and what manure sources they're utilizing uh, when it comes to any future applications. And so the amount of zinc in soil is really important as well as the amount in the manure. And if you end up with zinc accumulation, pH can be one of your only options for mitigation. And so when we look at uh, copper and zinc availability in soils, we can see that as we increase our soil pH to agronomic levels, uh, we can reduce the availability of zinc in our soils. And so this is one of two mitigation options that we provide um, as suggestions for growers if they're facing a zinc toxicity issue. Um, so we recommend that they lime to at least a pH of 6.2, um, and then, of course, if you lime higher than 6.2, we definitely want to keep an eye out for manganese uh, deficiency symptoms and apply foliar manganese uh, if we end up having manganese deficiency because of liming to a higher pH. So localizing toxicity can come from a few different sources. One is uneven application of of manure, we've definitely, I've seen all of these situations play out. Uh, either you went to the wrong field, you thought you had um, approval to be in a field, turns out you did not. Uh, mechanical breakdown or a tanker spill, applications uh, to parts of the field and accidentally going over it twice. Uh, old barns or sheds, so uh, galvanized roofing can also be a source of zinc. So if you see a square that won't grow anything, uh, sometimes that's an old barn or an old shed had a galvanized roof uh, and caused localized zinc toxicity. And so I would really encourage you to talk to your farmers about how to keep good records or map areas to prevent further issues. So if you're soil testing and you recognize that certain areas of the field have high soil zinc, we really need to try to make sure we avoid those areas in the future. 
Um, and we can obviously get issues when we have our swath widths too close. So we have seen areas, uh, it was in a cotton field where in the overlaps, they were too close. And so they got too high of an application of swine sludge and every you know three rows of cotton was just hammered. Uh, because of high zinc. And so um, making sure that you calibrate equipment and know the effective swath width of your equipment is also critically important. So we have, remember I said there were two options that we recommend for mitigation. Again, this is not remediation. There's really not a good strategy for fixing this problem once it exists, but we do have a couple options to help mitigate the situation. One is deep tillage or soil turnover. So um, testing layers of the soil either every two to four inches to see whether uh, tillage or plowing can redistribute those nutrients and dilute them throughout a larger uh, area of the soil profile. In North Carolina, we have acidic subsoil, so we have to be careful with how deep we till. Liming, uh, that's something that we can do to, again, decrease the availability of zinc in our soils. Drawdown strategies, you can attempt to draw down using hyperaccumulators or removing uh, as much biomass as possible through your crop rotation. But in some instances here, we're talking about hundreds of years worth of zinc that's accumulated in our soil. So uh, drawdown set strategies, it, it would need to be a somewhat reasonable level to be able to think that you'd ever be able to accomplish that. So usually it's not a strategy that uh, we can really suggest because it just takes uh, generations instead of decades. So always use that manure test. Please encourage your farmers to use a manure test if they are utilizing uh, either swine manure or um, poultry manure. Uh, make sure the equipment is calibrated and that the actual person using the equipment knows the effective swath width. Um, keep good records. Have maps of, of different soil types as well as where um, you've had stockpiles or where you had a spill. Having those records can help really explain and help troubleshoot issues. Uh, and if you do see something, um, you know, having tissue and soil samples uh, to help you identify those issues can be helpful as well.